around here before. Oh, hi. I'm just visiting. Really? Visiting, huh? Well, I bet you'll never want to leave once you get to see everything here. Is that so? Why, yes. It's so wonderful here. It's like a fairy tale. But not a lame, cheesy one. One with adventure, passion, where anything you can think of is possible. Anything, huh? Yeah, seriously. I could show you things you never dreamed could happen. Oh, yeah? How about a... A triosaurus waiter at a vegan restaurant. Okay, you got it. Let's go. Wait, what? For real? Yes, for real. Follow me. But it's not a date or anything. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I could eat some lunch. So, what's your name? Shiera. Wow, I never heard such a beautiful name. Oh, please. No, seriously. Thanks. What's yours? My name's Ralph. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. You mean, like what people do when they're all ill in the stomach? Well, yeah, I guess. Weird. You out-of-towners have the strangest names. This is quite the place. I know. Wait till you taste the food. Yep. Vegan food. Served by a Tyrannosaurus waiter? Right. But don't call him that. They don't like to be called that around here. Because of the whole tyrannical association with the old mindless beast stereotype. They like to go by T-Rexes. Or just Rexes for short. Oh, I see. Right. Hi guys. Welcome to Sprout About. My name's Crush. I'll be your server today. Can I start you off with some drinks? Sure. I'll have a tall ice peach willow tea. Um, I'll have a mint mocha chip ice brewed frappy pappy crappuccino. Okay. It's a sweet get up, dude, bro. Thanks. <laughs> Holy snikes. You weren't kidding. A T Rex waiter. Unbelievable. <laughs> At a vegan restaurant. Get out of here. I know. Pretty crazy. Like I said, anything is possible here. If you can think of it, whatever you can imagine. If it can exist in your mind, then you have the power to make it come true. Really, as much as I'd like to, I don't know if I can believe that. I mean, I just doubt myself sometimes. It seems the older I get, the harder things seem, and the more impossible they become. No! That's a horrible way to think, Ralph. You have to think positive. I know, and I usually do, but lately I just don't feel as vibrant and as spontaneous as I used to. I guess you just get stuck in a routine. Aww. I swear, no matter how bad things can be, you have the power to change them. All you need is a little self-confidence. Don't let your circumstances get you down. You need to find the things you're good at and believe in them. I know. You're right. I just don't know if I have it in me anymore. Sure you do. I'll show you. Uh, hey, cadets. Uh, do you want to go ahead and order your food now? Yeah. I'll have a dried, cheery spinach salad and the grilled tofu sandwich with avocado and fried plantains. For you, bro? Well, I'm kind of confused. If you're a vegan restaurant, then how come you offer buffalo chicken wrap? It's not actually chicken, it's seitan, which is gluten of wheat, which is then seasoned and tastes like chicken. I see. Well, why not just eat chicken? It's kind of a long story, but here you go. It initially wasn't the fact that eating chicken or any meat was actually bad for you, or even a bad thing at all. Back a long time ago when food was scarce, eating animals was basically a necessity. But even then, it wasn't bad for you. It wasn't until around the Delightment era that factory farming was developed and animals were injected with all kinds of unnatural antibiotics and hormones that eating meat became hazardous. Also, around this time, genetically modified crops were developed, which spread a bigger fear of unnatural foods and spawned the rise of organic products. But by this time, there was a surplus of food, so eating meat was no longer a necessity. So we just felt cutting it out of our diets was the humane thing to do. We don't need to eat animals, so why bother when we can prepare other natural alternatives that taste just as good? You know what I mean, bro? Wow, that's convincing enough. I'll have the buffalo chicken wrap and the not Monsanto mixed veggies. Alright man, coming right up. Maybe there's some dialogue here between Shiera and Ralph. Just... Like, we should be having some banter? Yeah, some friendly banter, maybe about like, 
pets and loving animals, you know, like. Okay, well that sounds good to me. I love animals. Yeah, it will be something like, uh, like contradictory about how eating meat, but yeah, at the same time, like we love our pets, you know. All right, here you go. Dried sherry spinach salad and the grilled tofu sandwich with avocado and fried plantains for the young lady. And the buffalo chicken wrap with the not Monsanto mixed veggies for the soon to be vegan convert. Can I get you anything else, man? Mmm, smells delicious. I think we're good, thanks. Okay, you go first. You're gonna love it. All right, here it goes. Oh man, this is really, really tasty. It's just like chicken. Maybe even better. I knew you'd like it. Yeah, give yours a try. It's like my taste buds are having a little party in my mouth. So what do you think? Ah, it's so good. I can't even taste the difference. Give our compliments to the chef. Great. Everyone here seems so content and jovial. Don't you ever feel sad or depressed? Well, to be honest with you, those aren't really emotions that we feel much anymore. Some here even claim not to feel those kind of emotions at all. They seem to have completely lost the sense of sadness and depression altogether. No way. How's it even possible? Um, well, emotions can evolve and unevolve. They're circumstantial and subjective. Just as emotions are first experienced by individuals as they mature, emotions also had to be born into society as culture evolved. For instance, I'm sure some of the earliest emotions experienced by prehistoric man were probably confusion and fear. And later, as society grew more sophisticated, new, more complicated emotions must have evolved, such as empathy, gratitude, inspiration, and true love. Oh, and I assume you feel that, given certain circumstances, there's also the opportunity for emotions not only to advance, but also disappear entirely. Not only for the individual, but ultimately for society as a whole? Yes, exactly. If you can eliminate certain circumstances and variables, more primitive emotions can completely vanish. Yeah, I'm following you. Let's make a little comparison. Were you ever in love? Yes, once a long time ago. I was young and I don't think it was a very developed, mature love, but I'm sure it was real love just because of how strong I felt it. Okay, well, have you experienced love since then? Uh, no. Do you remember what it felt like? Maybe in some ways. Mostly just the intensity of it. But honestly, I haven't felt it in so long, I probably have completely lost touch with how it truly feels. So, just as you had first experienced true love, and since then, because your circumstances changed, you have quite possibly forgotten that emotion. This can also happen for probably many other emotions. For instance, sadness and depression are not often felt here because the circumstances for those emotions have changed. Sure, things happen here that have the potential to trigger those emotions, such as mistakes, accidents, and death, but we as a society have reached such a new level of enlightened acquiescence that we interpret and deal with the circumstances differently. Well, I guess I can see how that could work in theory. But it's, it's just a little hard for me to imagine a world so so utopic and balanced that whole emotions could potentially vanish. 